What's up guys? Today we are doing the vulnerability capstone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is going to sum up all of our vulnerability path um, on the junior pen testing path. This is the last box. This is pretty easy box, um, but there are some, some gotchas on it and I'll kind of show you that as we go. Um, but I like this box because it lets you have multiple ways of actually give me a sec here okay we're good that uh there's multiple ways of actually getting into this box which i like um the problem is the way they want you to do it uh you'll see what i mean i'll, I'll show you but it's it's important that you guys watch to the end only because otherwise you're going to get snagged on this i'll tell you that now so um hopefully you guys are liking the series we're doing well we're getting it done and uh, we're enjoying it. So let's get going. So let's get hacking. So this is just going to put all of your the stuff they've taught you together and kind of show you guys what you would do. So you can see this is more of what you'd see in a uh, CTF type box or something. You might see one or two questions. You're not going to see all that list of questions. So I'm going to walk you through kind of the mentality of how you do these. So deploy it. Wait for five minutes. Okay, we've done that. Boom. So what is the name of the application running on the vulnerable machine? And I'm purposely hiding it, guys. Um, so the name of the application running on the vulnerable machine. So first thing we would do is we just go ahead and in-map it. Now, I'll show you guys. I'm going to show you guys what I do for a box like this where I know it's going to be easy. And then I'll show you guys what I'll do for a larger box or more um, intense box and also for a pen test. So for this box, I would just in-map it. Um, no big deal. Now for a regular box or for um, like an actual pen test, I'm probably going to do an SN, which is the, so it doesn't scan the ports. It only scans the, uh, the host. Okay. We didn't get any results, but that's what I do first because that's not actually scanning the port. So it's not very loud. Right? So then we'll go ahead and in map and then I'll tell you most of the time, since this is a temporary box, I'm not worried about it. We'll just say um, capstone. I always save it. Um, usually I'd save it in a greppable format, but I'm not worried about it here. I'm just showing you guys. So I'd save it. You can see that it didn't pop up because now it's saved. So we'll go ahead and cat capstone. Boom. Okay, so we have two ports. We have SSH and HTTP. Um, now we could actually try and take over the SSH if we wanted to, but they're looking for the HTTP is what they're wanting. So first things first, let's open up the web browser and go to that site and see what we're looking at. And this is what you do anytime that you see that it's a web server running. 10, 10, 21. Okay, so right here, Fuel CMS. So this is a default page. You can tell right here it's a default page. Um, first things first, the name of the application running is Fuel CMS. Version is 1.4. So now we know the version and we know what it is so that means we're probably pretty far along already as far as what we're going to do now if you actually read this default page it tells you here to access the fuel admin go to this and enter admin admin and you can see if you do that you actually have complete admin access so i know a lot of you are thinking well this isn't the actual box but this is admin access to whatever you wanted to do with it so that's that itself is breaking this machine. So that's pretty cool that you can already do that. Um, you can update it. You can do whatever. Um, you could create backdoor users here. So let's see how many users they have. They have just the one, um, which isn't surprising. There's probably nothing on here. Um, pages, nothing. Dashboard, nothing. So this is all default. So you could add your own web pages or whatever you wanted to do here. So keep that in mind that this is an, an important step in this because if you sometimes it is literally that easy sometimes people leave it in the notes on the page so if you go to page source you can see that the people left notes in the code um, sometimes you'll see people will leave default credentials that's very common I'll tell you that now and the reason for it is you might have five or six admins working on one page or on one um, application in a smaller environment maybe a, a 10 to 20 you know um, employee company and when that happens they're not getting paid a ton so they're probably not super experienced and they they might have a couple admins maybe you know three or four and when that happens 
they don't want they don't have like a, a password vault or something so they just me- keep it as the admin admin and say hey it's admin admin you know just you mem- you can't forget that you know so keep that in mind that that is common so it, you will run into it so now uh, we inmapped it we've got the results we saved them I always save the inmap results um, when I'm doing like a pen test or a longer box one that's going to take me a couple hours or something like that because you do you will have to refer back to it um, and I do try and save it in a greppable format um, typically so now that we've got that I can go ahead and clear this out so now we're looking for the CVE number that allows us so first thing I'm going to do is search exploit fuel CMS and you can see right there we've got multiple so we got remote code execution with this which is what we want okay so here's where you're gonna get caught up so first things first we can just type in fuel CMS version we can just do and you can see that someone's already searched for default credentials at some point that is just gonna be the admin admin but that's that easy so you can see here there's actually multiple and I've clicked on a lot of them to see if they're the same um, thing and they pretty much are um, but you can see here if you click on exploit DB here's the CVE number and that's the next question is what's the CVE number boom we've got it CVE number done and done now here's where you're gonna get caught up we're gonna get snagged this seems pretty basic pretty straightforward you change the URL to whatever your, your URL is you run the you run it but there's a couple things here number one you can see they're using burp okay they're using a burp proxy so you could get rid of the proxy okay because you don't want to send the request to your burp suite if you want to send it to burp suite you can use this with burp suite and you can forward the packets and that's fine the problem is I d- did not want to use this excuse me because it was a pain in the butt because you don't need the burp suite okay they're do I get why they're doing it um, the other thing is this is a Python 2 code and you need to run Python well most machines have Python 3 so when that happens you have to change either change the code into Python 3 which would be um, changing some of the code like right here you need a parsing um, you would need different things like that you would have to get rid of this proxy if you're not using burp um, that type of stuff so you would have to change this document a little bit to actually get it to work or this uh, script now and that's where I got a little snagged because it this is an old old version okay and it's I know it says 2019 whatever was when the exploit was found but this script is written in Python 2 the attack machine didn't have Python 2 at the time uh, anyway it's a pain in the butt to change everything that you need it and get it to run properly especially since this is written for burp suite so I, I was able to do it but I thought I, I looked up some of the other people that did the same thing and it was kind of frustrating because most of them what they did is what I didn't want to do which is they were going to or they released the their walkthroughs and when they did that they said here's the original script here's the modified one and some didn't some didn't even give you the modified one they just said you can download my modified script here if you want to like that's frustrating to me because it's like I want someone to walk you through what they're doing not someone that simply gives you the code right because that's not helping so I after kind of I would say 20 minutes or so of writing the writing it and stuff I thought there, there's no way for this easy of a box this is what they expect you to do and so I actually looked at the hint here and they actually have the exploit sitting here for you okay and it's already not only sitting but it's already designed for this box for the attack so I didn't realize that um, that's the one I definitely recommend you use this is gonna show you the exact same principles the difference is you're not gonna have to edit the code at all so first things first we need to get a, a shell listener so if you guys aren't familiar for a reverse shell you need a listener so the listener is gonna listen for the reverse um, request and then give you access so we're gonna use netcat and we'll just do 8081 so now it's listening on 8081 
All right, so you're gonna need your IP address for your box. My attack box, I think I have it copied so that I can paste it. So now we're going to actually, you can see here if I LS, we have the exploit in here. So now we can go ahead and Python 3 because they changed it for us. And you can view this one if you want, but they actually gave you a little bit of a, um, a GUI interface, if you will. And all right, so we'll go ahead and hit it. And you can see here, okay, so we ran it and it gives us usage, Python 3, exploit.py, vulnerable IP address. So, okay, so we need to put the IP address in there. That has to be part of the syntax. So 121.21, and then when we hit it, okay, so we've got three options. We've got exit, shell me, and help. So let's do help. Okay, it gives us the same menu. So really, the, we have one option. We have shell me. We hit it, enter your attacking machine IP and port number. So now I have to paste my IP address for the attack box. And then remember, you have to put the port number. We're running our netcat listener on 8081. So that's what we're gonna do. Hope you had your listener ready. So you can see they're pretty lenient on what they're doing. They're, they're really helping you out here, which I think is very important because this there's so many ways to manipulate that script to make it work for what you're trying to do that I saw multiple ways to manipulate it where I could get the reverse shell, but I'm getting all kinds of extra content. So then I went to Pentest Monkey and got an, another netcat listener. It's just, it was so convoluted that it takes away from the actual purpose of this box, which is to put together a path that you're going to take from starting with nmap, going to start Googling the, um, the actual version numbers, and then taking the exploit and actually using it. So I think it's, it's a poorly done box because of that. But if they didn't have this hint here, if they said, Hey, the exploit is here, I think it'd be better. All right. And you can see here, our netcat listener is listening, caught the connection, and boom, we have a reverse shell. So we hit ls, and we're there. So now let's see, let's see what's in robots.txt. Is there anything? User agent, it's the only thing. Okay, cool. Disallow fuel, which is the admin page. Cool. Okay. So now it tells us right here, the flag is located in home. So we need to change to home, Ubuntu. And that's where the flag is located. So cat our flag and boom, there's our flag. Super simple, super easy. So before you guys get crazy and start diving into the web and trying to figure out what people are doing, because so many people do it differently that it's going to confuse you. I'm telling you now it's going to confuse you. Just use the script they give you. That's the point of this box. The point of this box is not to learn how to edit a Python 3 script. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind what you're trying to learn here. You're trying to learn the fundamentals, the basics. You're trying to understand the, the pen tester mindset. So yes, a lot of people will probably say uh, they don't agree with that. Yeah, we can close it. That they, they think you should manipulate the script yourself, so on and so forth. And I understand where they're coming from. But the problem is that's not the point of this box, in my opinion, okay? So you can see here, here's your answers. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. And then I know you can't see the last one, so we'll move this up. There's a CVE number, you can copy it, you can do whatever. And it's that easy, guys. But it's important that you guys have that mindset of what path you need to take when you're doing these boxes, um, especially because I don't want to say the, the mindset is the same because it has to change on the fly, but you should have an, an idea of where you're going to start and where you're going to finish as far as, um, you know, with a box like this, you already have a lot of information given to you, but you should already start with in-map, even if it gave you what port you're supposed to be using, I still always do an in-map scan, um, now, if you have permission on boxes like this, you can make that scan as loud as you want and get as much information as you want. Now, if you're doing a pen test and they say, We're, we don't want you to get caught, we want to see if you can get away, blah, 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 that type of stuff. Okay, obviously you got to tone it down. So know your audience and know your scope as well. I think that's really important. And I think uh, this box really shows a good, easy, you know, 
vulnerability, obviously, but it lets you just keep going through that motion of, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this to get the result. So I really like the box. I think it was poorly executed, but that's just my opinion because they do make it more complex than need to be. Um, they could have picked a different vulnerability for the same exact result. Um, that's just me, but it's all good. I think it was good box, good information, and the vulnerability capstone. We are done with the vulnerability um, portion of the junior pen testing. Let's see what we've got left. All right, now we're diving into the Metasploit, it looks like. Yeah, we get the Metasploit. You guys will really like Metasploit. It's a very good tool. It's a hacker's dream. Um, I actually like it a lot. I like um, CrowdStrike a little better, but that's neither here nor there. Now, guys, I hope you guys liked the vulnerability portion of the actual pen testing path. Hopefully, you guys are going to keep enjoying them, and we're going to keep on trying, guys. Hopefully, you guys like it. If you guys do, like, subscribe, and good news, guys. I got some big news coming for you guys soon, and also, we're reaching that 300 mark for subs. Let's go ahead and hit it, guys. I, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you.